Today's call is called Scripts, Scripts, and a Listing Presentation to Boot. We're here today because we want to understand leads, listings, and leverage. Leads, listings, and leverage. Now, a lot of real estate agents, I tell you, I was one of them, they did it in the wrong order. What they did is they said, hey, I'm going to generate a whole lot of leads because I, I took this real estate designation called IMSD and I learned how to do all this Craigslist postings, right? I spent all this money on pay-per-click or I'm a geek and I, I spent all night blogging and doing search engine optimization and I ended up with a whole lot of leads and then they went out there and they said, hey, I'm going to hire a whole bunch of people and they built a team almost the wrong way because my coach, my mentor, he says that you got to start with listings because if you take a listing today, wouldn't you agree and feel free to type in your answer that you would generate sign calls, Craigslist leads your database would increase. You'd have people to come to your open houses. And all those things, all those things, those would be called what? Those would be called leads. Wouldn't you agree? And if you had more leads than you could physically handle, wouldn't you need some leverage? Wouldn't you need some leverage? I'm talking about showing agents, buyer's agents. And if you had somebody else showing the properties for you, if you had somebody else working your buyer leads, what would you have more time to do? What would you have more time to do? Hello? Are you out there? Yeah. Yeah. You would have time to get some more listings. And spend some time with your family, walk your dog, take care of your the ones you love the most. And then if you have more listings, you get more leads. You get more leads, you get more leverage. And then once you've done this enough times and the circle keeps spinning like a, like a merry-go-round, then you get, you get to fire yourself and you get hired to a brand new job. And your brand new job is the who. I'm not talking about the band. I'm not even old enough to know who the who is. What I'm saying is the who. Who should you be in business with? Who should you be hiring? I'm going to do a call on it, by the way. In fact, I'm kind of committing to doing one of these calls every two weeks for the ongoing future unless I have an opportunity to go hunting and fishing, and then you guys are just uh, what I like to call SOL, out of luck, because I'm going to do that. But if you guys keep showing up, I'm going to keep teaching. We're going to figure out today the first part of this equation, the scripts to get listings and the scripts to close them. I know this. I know how to do this. Because I, well, I've taken thousands and thousands of listings. One year on my own, I, I went on 240 listing appointments, and I listed 217 of them. Some of the 23 that I didn't take, I just didn't like like them. They were grumpy. I don't like to work with grumpy people. Do you guys like to work with grumpy people? No, no. Thank you for typing it in. Thank you for the couple of people that are not on Facebook right now. No, we don't. We don't want to work with grumpy people. Which brings me to kind of an interesting point. An interesting point. Getting a listing is going to be about the activities that you do and the scripts that you say. And I just want to walk through a couple of scripts before we get into the actual listing presentation today. And I want you guys to know there's a, there's a trend in the real estate industry, a trend to practice handling the toughest of objections. I mean, how do you get somebody that says, why are you calling? You're the 1,000th agent to call me. And then, then, then trying to be the agent that can overcome that objection. I want to give you guys a little tip. Don't practice those things. You know why you don't practice those things? Because we don't work with jerks. I have no interest in spending my time trying to convince some jerkwad to list his home with me because if he's a jerk now, he's going to be a jerk later. I would like to practice scripts that get me into business with the nicest individuals I could find, with the sweetest, the most charming, generous, loving. You get what I'm saying? Hello? Hello? Is there anybody out there? Out there in the cold, getting lonely, getting old, can I hear you? All right, so how are we going to get some listings? If you're like me, you don't like spending money. I'll give you a penny and I'll ask for my change back. You know what I mean? I'm trying to make some money. I'm not an agent with a big ego that says, hey, I gross this much money. 
I don't care how much you gross. I want to know how much did you net at the end of the day. When the whole thing's said and done, how much money is in your piggy bank? How much money is under your mattress, in your socks? I want to know how much net income you're going to get. And if you want to have net income, you can't spend a ton of money on a bunch of junk. So we're going to go for the cheap things. I'm talking about calling canceled, expired, FISBOs, default list, neighborhoods. And neighborhoods, I'm talking about circle prospecting, circle prospecting, and then just listed, just sold. Now, I built my business off calling canceled expires, and I did it because a lot of the agents were taking listings and letting them expired. I called those agents recon. See, in, in recon in the Army, they go out and see what's going on. In our, in our industry, the recon are the agents that go out and take listings and let them expire. So you find them, and then I sell them. You in? What we do with canceled expires is first you've got to have a process. Our process is that we call them three times in the first day. The next thing that we do is we call them once a day for a week. And then we call them once a week until they list with us or they die. Because we know that we are the absolute best agent for them to get their home sold. And we want to do it. We want to help them get to the next place in their life. Our scripts are very simple. When you're calling a canceled expired, we don't negotiate two things. We don't talk about price and we don't talk about commission. All those things are unimportant unless you're actually going to meet with them. We're having a conversation with them, and, and we're just going to be simple and direct and to the point. I see that your home recently came off the market. My staff and I were surprised that your home didn't sell. Based on the photographs and the location, your home seems like one of the homes that should have sold over the last six months, because in the last six months we've seen there's been nearly 50 homes sold in your area. I would like to sit down with you and talk to you about how I could help you get the most amount of money for your home in the least amount of time. Would you be interested in spending 15 minutes with me if it could help you answer those questions? Very simple, very direct. Well, what do you, I'm not willing to reduce the price. That's fine. I'm not asking you to. Well, I'm not going to pay a full commission. Completely understand. That's not a problem. When can we get together? When can we get together? Very simple. I'm going to skip FISBOs. I'm going to go down to Circle Prospecting. Circle Prospecting, we just had this great instructor come up and speak to 250 of my agents yesterday, Craig Rieger, he, and he taught a class called 90 Listings in 90 Days. Great class, great guy. You guys should have him out to speak for you, too. Anyway, we were talking about Circle Prospecting. We've been doing this for a while, and so is, so, so is he. Basically, what you're doing is you're going to go and you're going to get a software like Mojo Sells, not a sales pitch, but they're the only ones I know that does this. And you go into Mojo Sales and you pick an address like 1234 Main Street, maybe a listing you just took or a listing you just sold or a neighborhood that you live in, and you're going to say, hey, I want 250 or I want 500 or I want 1,000 phone numbers around that point. And you're going to hit a button, and that button is going to give you all their names, addresses, and phone numbers, and they're going to load them into this system that dials them automatically for you. You're going to pre-record a voicemail that leaves a voicemail for them, so anybody that doesn't answer, it's leaving a voicemail while you're dialing the next person. And then if somebody picks up, you're going to simply say, Hi, uh, this has been Kenny with, with, with XYZ Realty. We're trying to help a family move into your area. And as you know right now, when homes are going on the market, they're selling relatively fast. They've seen everything that's currently available, and nothing matches their family needs. So as a courtesy to them, I told them that I would call around the neighborhood and see if I could find anybody that had thought about selling, that was curious about selling, or would consider selling, that I could help connect so that this family could have a home before their kids get into school next year. Do you yourself know anybody that's interested in, in selling a home? Yes or no? Doesn't matter what the answer is. Fantastic. Would you yourself consider selling your property? No, I wouldn't. Let me ask you a question. I understand that you don't want to sell. Would you consider selling your home in the future at some point? Well, in the future, yeah, in the future, we'd probably sell. Let me ask you a question. Would that be in five years, three years, one year, three months, six months? How, how late are you thinking? Well, we'd, we'd probably do it in three years. Let me ask you a question. In three years, what would you sell your home for? 
well, we'd sell it for 350000 Okay, let me ask you a question. If I could get you more than that now, would you consider selling it? Well, could you? I don't know. I haven't seen the inside. What I'd like to do is schedule a time to go over and meet with you and take a look. Well, I don't want to list my home. Perfect. If I had a buyer that wanted to buy your home now for 350000 would you sell it? Assuming that I could get you into another home at a really good deal. Well, we might consider it. That's all I'm looking for is a might, and I'm the lowest pressure guy you'll ever meet. I would just like to see the inside. Does that work for you? Joel Rico says that I should stop saying, let me ask you a question. Just ask them. Thank you, Joel. Joel is one of the, one of the uh, guys that I never recognize when I see him, but he is one of the best sales script trainers and language of sales guys I've ever met. So thanks for jumping on the call today, Joel. You could do the same thing with just listed, just sold, or with uh, open houses. Now, the Mojo Sales system uh, double checks the do not call list. So let's talk about open houses. You, you pick a place you're going to do an open house, and you're going to call the entire neighborhood, and you're going to say, as you probably know, we just listed your neighbor's home, Joe. He lives at 1234 Main Street. Joe asked me if I would give each one of my neighbors a call, or his neighbors a call, and invite them to come to his open house that he's having on Sunday. Now, we have the general things that neighbors want at an open house. You can see how we decorate it, see his floor plan, and I'm even bringing some cookies and, and some, some nice drinks there. Additionally, what we found is a lot of times neighbors, when a neighbor's home goes on the market, they're curious about what home values are like. So I will have a list of all the recent sales while we're there, and we'll have a list of what we consider to be the best priced properties in town, bank loans, foreclosures, etc. And I wanted to ask you a question. Our marketing generates usually 10 times the amount of buyers than the average agent, and we only have one of Joe's homes to sell. So if we had extra buyers that were looking to move into the area, can you think of anybody else that might have a home that might be larger or smaller or in a different part of the neighborhood so that we could help these people find a, a home as well? What do you guys think about that? Hello? Don't make me sing. Is there anybody out there again? This is simple. How would you like to have 150 people through your open house? You guys could put down put down your Us Weekly magazine, and you could actually be selling some properties. We just recruited an agent over to our company that made almost $600,000 his first year. All he did was open houses, and he did two of them a week, both on the same day. He did them from 11 to 1 and from 2 to 4. Hello, first year in the business. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? For those of you on the call today, I'm going to email you this video, so don't try to jot down the scripts. Pay attention to me. Pay attention. Do you like that? How does that feel? Is that good? All right. Let's get back into the the rest of the stuff. Let's get back into the content, the meat, the meat and the potatoes. Are you ready for the fastest listing presentation available? As Joel Rico would say, I shouldn't have asked you that question. I should have just told you, here comes the fastest listing presentation you have ever heard. Are you ready? Is there anything other than price that you would like to discuss prior to taking care of the paperwork? No? Let's start with the paperwork. When you go into a home, don't bore them with your silly listing presentation when they're ready to sign. Get in and out. Your time is worth money. You have somebody at home that you love and care about. Go spend time with that person. They want you off of work at a certain time. Trust me. Get in. Ask them the simple script. Is there anything other than price that you would like to discuss prior to taking care of the listing paperwork. Craig Rigger yesterday, he shared a script. I think, I think it was a Bruce Hardy thing that he shared, but it was Bruce said, <clears throat> suffice to say that the marketing that I do is incredible. Do you have any specific questions about our marketing? If not, 
you move on. If not, you move on. Get what I'm saying? Okay. Then you're done. Thanks for being on this call today. Goodbye, click. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're getting to, we're getting to the to the meat and potatoes. Now we're getting now we're getting to the listing presentation. Okay. Let's talk about a listing presentation. Why did I do it? Okay. I wanted to have a fantastic listing presentation because I wanted it to know that if I went on a certain amount of appointments, I would get a certain amount of listings. And as you build your team bigger and bigger and you have other people going on listing appointments or other people representing your brand, you want to make sure that they're saying the exact same thing. You want to make sure that they're saying the exact same thing. So what I did is I made a listing presentation that I could do with an iPad or a laptop. I did it so that I could do it with a blank piece of paper or I could do it like a mime with my hands. A simple listing presentation. I make them memorize it, members of my team by the way, first on the iPad or the laptop verbatim exactly how I say it. Then, once they've mastered it, they present it to the entire group, and once the group agrees that it's verbatim the way that I say it, they are promoted and allowed to go on their own listing presentations. But we wouldn't give them listing leads until this is complete. This has allowed us to make sure that our brand is equally represented whenever somebody goes on an appointment and that if we go on a listing appointment, we should be able to get a certain percentage of listings back. Prior to this listing presentation conversation, we are talking about the scripts, what to say to people. Well, <clears throat> in my business, I learned that if I dialed 52 people, I'd talk to about 15. And if I talked to 15 people, I'd get a listing appointment. So on our team, we created what's called Do the 50, where we call 50 people a day because we know on average you're going to get a listing appointment. Even if you're 50% good at it or you suck 50% of the time, you're still going to get a listing appointment every other day if you dial 50 people. How many people on the call would be happy if they had an extra two or three listing presentations to go on every single week? That's what I'm talking about. Right? Okay. Let's get into uh, my listing presentation. <clears throat> when I get to the home, I first ask for a tour of the property. Not because I haven't seen a home like theirs. Trust me, when you sell as many homes as, as we do up here in Washington State, you know what their home looks like. I do it to walk around. I'm looking for improvements. I'm looking for repairs that are needed, but mostly I make them come with me and I'm trying to get to know them. I'm trying to understand are they a D, you know, from the disc test, dominant, they want me to hurry. Are they an I, they don't care what I say as long as they get to talk the whole time. Are they an S, call my next appointment and cancel because it's going to be a long one. Are they a C, skip all of it and just go straight to the numbers and talk about the CMAs and exactly what they're going to net down to the penny. And I'm going to learn that through the questions that I ask while touring. Additionally, I'm going to be looking around their home at their books they have on their shelves, their movies. I'm going to be looking to figure out what they do for a living or asking them I'm going to be learning as much stuff as possible because my goal is to relate with the individuals. In most situations, you know, NAR will tell us that, that nearly 66% of people only interview one agent. The most important step is going to be do they like you? Can you relate to them? People almost always like people like them, so you've got to find some way to relate to them. You got to find some way to relate to them. As my friend Pat on the call says, you got to use the Ford method. That's family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. You know what I'm saying? 
we'll have a call coming up here in the future talking about cold reading and advanced rapport building and the FBI's guide to body language and, and how to know if somebody's lying to you. I'll do a call like that for you, and it'll be a freakish call. Okay, once that's all done, we're going to sit down. We're going to sit down, and we're going to do the listen presentation. <clears throat> Let's take somebody. Let's take somebody. Who's on the call right now that I know? I'm just going to use somebody's name. Jeff, thank you for volunteering. Jeff can't speak back to us, but we're going to pretend that Jeff's speaking with us today. Jeff, I want to thank you for giving our company an opportunity to talk to you about achieving your goal of selling your property for the most amount of money in the least amount of time. Before we get started, I want to talk to you first about what sets us apart as an as a option for you. And I know because 99% of the people that I meet with never interview another agent after me that you're going to see that this is the most thorough process for selling homes out there. It's the most aggressive marketing plan that you've seen. And we are the most consumer-focused, consumer-friendly, customer-service-driven organization out there. Jeff says, thanks for coming over. <laughs> now, <clears throat> in my experience, there are three things that set our company apart from any other company in town. The first thing is that we work as a team. Now, in a normal real estate transaction, we estimate there's 180 individual tasks that need to be taken prior to even getting your home on the market. Now, <clears throat> Jeff, let me ask you a question. Joel, I'm not supposed to say that. Oh! Jeff, let me talk to you about if you were going to build a home. Jeff, if, if you were going to build a home, would you have the same person do your concrete, your dirt work, your painting, your framing, your electrical, your plumbing, the decorating, the kitchen cabinets, the roof, the inspections? Or would you want to have the best plumber, the best electrician, the best uh, granite guy, the best framer, the best general contractor to build your home? Jeff's saying that would be crazy. Of course I'd want the best one. Well, that's the way our team operates. So what we believe is that certain individuals that specialize in certain tasks can give consumers the best experience. So we've built a, a sales process that's like a team, which means I divide the tasks up into marketing, uh, pending coordination, uh, listing management, communication, negotiation. And we have individuals in our team that specialize in one or two of those tasks. And, and what's funny is that most people think that to have so many people working on selling your most valuable asset or most people's most valuable asset, that it would cost a lot more money. And you're going to find out at the end of this conversation that, that we don't cost really any more than anybody else that's a full-time real estate agent. <clears throat> and you're going, to get, you're going to get the value of a whole team for the price of an individual agent. So that's the first thing that sets us apart is we work as a team to sell your home for the most amount of money in the least amount of time. Now, the second thing that sets us apart is our track record. Now, Jeff, this isn't all of them, but this is an example of some of the homes that I've sold here in Washington State. And it'll give you an example of of the type of experience that you're getting. Now, I look, know that I look young and kind of stupid in general, but you can't pick a real estate agent because they've been in the business for 30 years when in 30 years they've sold 30 properties. I've sold as much business last year than most agents do in a lifetime. And because of that, I have more experience in, in, in the type of things that are relevant today handling the inspectors today, handling the banks today, marketing to buyers right now. Now, <clears throat> if you don't have this many homes that you've sold personally, 
what you got to do is you got to use the average. The average in our MLS in Washington State is about 2.97 homes sold. The average age in our MLS sold three homes last year. So if you sold nine, you're doing 300% more than the average agent, and that sounds big. Use compare and contrast, whether you've sold five properties or you sold 100, or use your brokerage track records if you're a brand new agent. Either way, let them know that you or your company or your team has experience in the area. By the way, this is a sneak peek at the craziest thing that's ever been developed for real estate. I've personally spent over a million dollars building this tool that's going to be released to all of you guys in the industry uh, coming soon to a home near you. And I'll tell you more about it later. Okay, track record is the number two thing that sets us apart. The third thing is, is how well we communicate. Now, Jeff, I could tell just, just within a few minutes of meeting with you that you were frustrated in the amount of communication the previous real estate agent gave you. Would you say that that was true? See, that statement right there, by the way, that's a script. But what it is, it's not asking a question. Like, let me ask you a question. How many... Uh, how often did the previous real estate agent communicate with you? It's not doing that. What it's doing is taking our, our knowledge of the industry, knowing that most real estate agents list it and forget it, they don't communicate often, and bringing it home to touch that little, that little button on that seller's heart that says, hey, I understand your frustrations. I could tell just by meeting with you in a few minutes you were frustrated with the amount of communication the previous agent gave you. What I would like to do is talk to you about how we communicate and how that sets us apart. Well, the first thing that we do is we're going to we're going to commit to calling you on a weekly basis. You pick the day and we'll call you that day every week. If you don't want to hear from me every week, I'll only call you if there's an urgent event like an offer or something that we need to handle, and I can call you every other week or every month, whatever's up to you. I'm hoping that this whole thing is done in a couple weeks anyway. But on top of that, we build a tool called Brivity. And Brivity is a tool that allows you uh, to see everything that we're doing. As you can see on the screen here, here is a list of all of the different tasks that we need to get done today. We need to feature your listing on Craigslist. We need to review this. We need to put it on Zillow. We need to do all these things. Every time I take a listing, we populate the hundreds of things that we need to get done on this list. And I can log in on any day and see if I have anything overdue, anything that's due today, and what's upcoming. When I check the box that I've done this task for you, when I check the box that I've done this task for you, you're going to get an email that says, congratulations, here's the 13 things that Ben did to get your home sold this week. By the way, here's all the places that we've advertised it this week, and here's the list of all the showing feedback. And then on that same email, when they click on the link, they're going to get sent to a page, or you're going to get sent to a page that shows you all the things that we're doing. You're going to land on a timeline that's going to be a list of everything that we're doing then you can click on the advertising button and see all the places we've advertised your property. And by the way, when you click on that, on the, our app places we've advertised your property, you're going to go to your listing on that site. You'll see your listing on Remax. You'll see your listing on the competitive company's site in town. You'll see your listing on Zillow, Truly, Realtor.com, blah, 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 Redfin, all those sort of things. Tasks, you'll see a list of all the tasks our team's completed for you. And showings, you'll see a list of all the showing feedback. You'll see a list of all the notes. You can leave notes. You can request things like more flyers or an open house or a call, and you'll have access to this 24 hours a day, 24 hours a day. This allows you to be in 100% control to know exactly what we're doing for the fee that we're charging and to have more communication than you've ever had in your experience of selling homes. This alone sets us apart from all other agents. See, I believe in transparency. If I'm transparent with you and what I'm doing to market your home, you'll be able to give me suggestions 
you'll be able to appreciate all the things that I'm doing and we'll be able to communicate honestly about the pricing and other things what I want is I want your permission to share with you exactly what agents are saying about your property exactly what buyers are saying about your property without filtering it would that be okay with you now when you add those three things up how we work as a team our sales track record and how we communicate most of the time sellers are ready to list their property with us right now what I would like to do is slow us down for a minute and I want to talk to you about what are the three things that determine if your property will or will not sell in this market the first thing that determines if your property will or will not sell in this market is how well your property is priced now price is not something that I get to decide and to be honest it's not something that you get to decide you get to decide what your home is listed for but not what it sells for what I'd like to do is talk to you a little bit about pricing now I'm in front of you today because you visited my home valuation site submitmyhome.com and on submitmyhome.com I gave you an estimate of what your home is worth now when I called you I told you that this is just an estimate and for me to give you an accurate listing price I would need to meet with you so now that we're together I want to talk to you about the pricing strategy that we use now I've created a process, trademark, Mr. Ben Kinney, called the 555. The 555 is the most accurate way to price a property in today's market. The 555 takes five active properties that are comparable to your own five pending properties that are comparable to your own <clears throat> and five sold properties and what you'll notice as we go through this 555 is that these homes are going to create a bracket now the active ones are the ones that aren't lucky enough to get an offer yet and those are going to be the high price point the pending ones are the ones that actually got offers and that's going to be the middle range that you would want to price your home and the sold properties is the is the accurate pricing what your home's probably actually going to sell for now I made a decision before I came in to list your property that that I wasn't going to be like other agents and I wasn't just going to take your listing and, and collect buyers from your sign calls from the sign calls in my marketing and use your home as a place for me to bake cookies and host open houses that I would only take your listing if I knew I could sell it and when I knew I could sell it it would have to be within a specific price range but before I go through that I'm going to show you each one of these things the five pendings five actors and five souls and you're going to help me determine the range that I already have in my head and we're going to pick a price that works that will actually get your home sold now this is only the first step because buyers are really who determines what your home is worth I gotta tell you something about your home though <clears throat> your home is unique there's only so many homes in this area that have 7.32 acres like yours that's 4153 square feet that has a partial view of the mountain but a full view of the lake you have a unique property because of that I need to take a wider look at properties and I'm not gonna just look at homes in your neighborhood we're gonna be looking all over the place checking out homes that buyers are looking for all over the county see what I know is that most of the people buying homes right now are relocating coming from another area be it close or be it far and they don't care that you live in this neighborhood they're gonna be looking at all neighborhoods in the area and I need to make sure that your home is not only competitive in your neighborhood but competitive all over the county and you'll see it from this report that you're gonna be amazed how accurate this pricing strategy is now we'll know how well we did in picking the price because every couple weeks we're gonna we're gonna review this information in general if we have priced your home correctly we will have offers on your property 
and we may have some low offers but I don't want you to be mad at the people that write you low offers I want you to be mad at the people that didn't write one those are the jerk faces if you know what I'm saying now we'll know that we're negotiating offers that your home is priced right if we're getting a lot of showings let's say more than five a week <clears throat> but we're not getting any offers after a few weeks or a month, we're probably four to six percent off on pricing. Four to six percent off. Now, if we're getting a low amount of showings, let's say one to three a week, we're probably six to twelve percent off on price. And if we're if all the marketing that I do, all the advertising, all the places that I put your property and all the things that I do, the calls and everything that I do, which I'm going to tell you about in a minute only is having people drive by your property we're gonna be at least 12 percent off on price we're gonna to have to make a decision after a few weeks or after a month how much to reduce the price of your home so that we can get it sold now does that seem like a realistic and fair fair way to price your property hello are you guys on the call still hello Jeff are you out there? Okay. By the way, guys, if you have a bunch of listings right now and they aren't sold, it's only a couple of reasons. It's one, it's in bad condition. Then then get your tool belt on and paint and go paint it, knucklehead. Wait, that's not your job, it's not your home, so you can't change that. Wait, it's in a bad neighborhood. Okay. Grab your truck, go down there, move the home, move the home to another neighborhood. Wait, you can't do that. Wait, you can't move the home? Or three, it's priced wrong. Hello? If you have homes on your shelves, if you have homes on your store and they are not sold, they are priced wrong, unfortunately. Reduce the price. Take this form, go back out there, do the 555, cash the checks that are in your wallet. Everybody on this call, go pin five listings this month just because you did this. Okay. Now, the second thing that determines if your property will or will not sell is, is how well your property shows. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about getting your property to show well. There's a couple things that we can do, but let's talk about the history of this. When I got into real estate nearly 10 years ago, when I would sit down with a buyer, we would sit at my conference room table and I would say, here's the 10 different properties that I'm going to show you today. Now what happens is I sit the same people down at the same table and they say, here are the 10 different properties you're going to show me today. Huh? They're picking out which properties to see before they ever meet with me, the real estate agent. That's crazy. So it's important how your property shows before people even get inside. You know, one of the reasons why you probably didn't get a lot of activity in the past having your home on the market with the other company could have been some of these things like how many photos he took how good was his virtual tour did he do a video did he have one of those robotic drone things fly around the outside did he do staging did he do those things now we have two choices one if you're gonna leave all the furniture and things in your house I'll give you some staging advice after you decide to list your property with me or two if your home is vacant or you're willing to remove everything from the home we can do what's called virtual staging now take a look at this client's house they have a nice beautiful home but you walk in and you're looking at it and you're like ah where would everything fit I have no imagination so what we can do is we can do virtual staging Virtual staging is where we virtually place furniture in the picture for you. And this is what it looks like afterwards. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? That's like most of our business cards. They virtually staged our face on our business cards because it looks nothing like it. Huh. Get it? That was funny, right? Hello? Hello? Virtual staging. Virtual staging 
is a way for us to showcase your property, show them virtually how your property could look if it was decorated or, or you know, arranged or so on. And what I can do is I can print out poster boards and put them on an art easel so when people walk in your property, they can see your property virtually staged. But it's still open and vacant so they can imagine their own world in there. Don't you think that would be a great way to sell your property? Wow. Now, when I add all these things up, the videos we're going to do, the virtual tours, the uh, single property web pages, the photographs, all that kind of stuff, the drony things, right? My RoboCop real estate photographer, that kind of stuff. When I add all that up, I know that I'm going to showcase your property online better than anybody else. And people are going to decide to get off their butt to get in a plane, to get in their car, to pick up the phone and call me to see the inside. Now, I believe that somebody's going to buy your home after they've seen the inside. Wouldn't you agree? So our goal is to get as most amount of people inside as possible. Now, just kind of a clarification. I advertise to all buyers whether or not they have an agent or not. So a lot of the buyers that come on your property will be coming inside with another agent because I marketed directly to that agent or directly to that buyer. So don't make the assumption that just because another agent is showing your home, they didn't come here because of the quality of our marketing and the quality of how your property shows and how well we priced it. Now, the third thing that determines how a property will or will not sell is how well it's marketed. And that's what I'm going to spend the majority of my time today talking about is marketing because that's the only thing that I control as a real estate professional. And to be honest, this is the only thing that you should think about when hiring a real estate professional because you control how your home looks and the market controls how it's priced. Now, The National Association of Realtors, notice I said Realtors and not Realtors, Realtors says that there's a certain way that buyers found the actual home that they purchased. And every year, they create a report called the Profile of Buyers and Sellers. Now, the Profile of Buyers and Sellers uh, on page 42 or something, it said, how did, how did buyers that bought a home in 2013 find the actual home that they purchased? And I use this information every single year. I adjust my marketing to make sure that I'm advertising to where buyers actually find homes. Not to where makes you as the seller happy, not to where makes my ego feel good, but where are buyers actually going to see your property? I'm in the business of selling homes, not listing. It's a big difference between me and the competitors. Now, Let's talk about marketing. Now, real estate agents are important. What I mean by that is the National Association of Realtors, from here on referred to as NAR, says that real estate agents represented nearly 33% of the uh, ways buyers found homes. What I mean by that is a real estate agent like me said to a buyer, you should go see this particular property. Now, real estate agents in general have access to all the properties on the MLS, but they're busy. They're showing clients. They're driving people around. They're focused on their own listings. You need to hire a real estate agent that has a marketing plan to market your property directly to other real estate agents. Hey, uh, uh, Patrick. Patrick on the call, he says that the guy in the last picture uh, showers with his clothes on. That makes me laugh. I was looking for a new picture of a real estate agent, but I couldn't find any online that wasn't cheesy. I need to find a new picture for a real estate agent, don't I? Because that looks like nothing like the guys in my market. If not, we'd have a lot more girls buying houses around here, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. You need to have a marketing plan that markets your property directly to agents. What we do is we advertise your property with electronic flyers. We'll send them to all the agents in the area. 
we'll send them to agents all over the nation, all over the state. And in my area, it's important that we advertise our properties internationally, so we'll send them to the top agents in other countries as well, as well specifically Canada. We deliver paper flyers to the top agents in the area. Some people still use paper, and we like to give it and be front and center in front of the top agents. In our market, we found that 20% of the agents sell 80% of the properties, so we try to focus on them. We'll send virtual tours out to all the agents in the MLS. They'll have access 24 hours a day to the virtual tour of your property. I consider that like an online open house, a 24-hour open house or a 24-hour broker's open or broker's tour because they can see your property anytime. They don't have to drive out there and be bribed with cookies and gas cards. It's more efficient and better for the top agents. Now, the next thing we do is we stand up at the realtor meetings. We stand up at our office meetings, and we talk about the listings that we have. We also believe in constant communications, and we already talked about my communications with you, the client, but we, we uh, believe in constant communications with real estate agents. Let me give you an example. Average agent probably isn't even going to call an agent and see what they thought of the showing when they brought a buyer there. We are going to email and call until we get a hold of that person nonstop. And you'll be able to access that on Brivity. You'll know when you got a showing. We'll log it in there. We had a showing. We called left message called them again, left message, emailed them again, left message, called them again, finally got a hold of them, here's what they said about your property, and we won't filter it. But we ask specific questions. Are your buyers going to buy the property, yes or no? If they're not going to buy the property, what could I do to get them to buy the property? If I did that, would they buy the property? Is there a price that they would buy the property for today? Whoa. If they didn't buy the property, what property did they buy or what property are they interested in so I could tell my clients to make their home more like this? This sort of communication allows us to give you the most accurate information so that you can make decisions about the condition of your home, staging, um, how they felt when they walked in, the pricing, etc. And I'm, I'm going to communicate like crazy to you about this. Now, when I add all this up, I've got to ask you a question. Is there anything that another agent has said that they would do in regard to marketing your property to agents that for some reason I forgot to mention? Jeff? No? And, and that's what I normally hear is that this is the most aggressive plan a seller has heard in marketing a property directly to other real estate agents. Now, that's only 33% of all the buyers found their home from an agent, so we've got to keep going. Now, online marketing, it's important. It's important. In fact, another unrealistic home shopper, Photoshop picture from iStock. In fact, 43, NAR said that 43% of buyers found the actual home that they purchased online first. 43% percent of buyers found the actual home that they purchased online first. Wow. First first time in history, by the way, that there's been a source greater than the real, than the real estate agent in marketing a property. But this is this is important. This is crazy because this is such a large number, the biggest in all the things I'm going to talk about that you have to hire a real estate agent that understands marketing properties online. You have to do it. Now, <clears throat> we've uh, gotten a lot of training. This really uh, good-looking, charming, witty gentleman that's a freak today uh, created a real estate designation called IMSD, the Internet Marketing Special Designation. All of our agents are trained on it. All of our agents understand how to market a property effectively online. What we learned in IMSD <clears throat> and from our experience selling properties is that that you got to advertise your property in five major places online. Five major places online. Now, the first place that you got to advertise your property is brokerage websites. Brokerage websites. <clears throat> now, I know you're probably considering interviewing some agents from different companies. Most people cancel those appointments or have me cancel those appointments after this presentation, and this is one of the reasons. Our technology allows us to get your property showcased on the major real estate brokerages in our area. So it doesn't matter if you like shopping on Redfin or, or 
Remax or Keller Williams or John L. Scott or Windermere because your property will be showcased on those websites as well. This is the thing that kind of normalizes all real estate agents. And any real estate agent, by simply putting your property on the MLS, can get your property on other brokerage websites. So do not, I beg you, don't pick a real estate agent because you like a specific brokerage website. <laughs> Unless you like mine a lot, then pick me because of that, if you know what I mean. The second place that you have to advertise your property is on national portals. National portals... National portals are uh, things like Zillow, Trulia, realestate.com, realtor.com, etc. And these are important places. I mean, I think the last report I saw that said Zillow was getting, you know, 60 million visitors a month or something goofy like that. And, and Trulia is spending $45 million on TV advertising and realtor.com and Yahoo Real Estate, etc., they get a lot of traffic. But a lot of real estate agents that you meet with will, will probably show you the same picture, and they'll say, hey, we're going to put your property on these major portals. What i got to tell you is that if you go to one of these sites and you search for real estate, you're going to have 25 pages of 27 properties per page, and your property is probably going to be on page 27. Do you think that would help sell your home if it was on page 27? See, what, what, what we realized is that in order to sell your property through national portals, we have to get your property as close to the top as possible. So what we've done is we've figured out ways to get your listings featured on Trulia and Zillow and Realtor.com, etc. One of the ways is I write them a huge check, <laughs> and, and it turns out you, uh, money can buy you about anything, including getting your listings to the first page. So we, whenever possible, we sponsor our listings on these sites. Number two, we found that some of them sorted by the number of photos, so we take a lot of photos. Other ones is by how often you uh, update the listing information, by if you include videos or virtual tours. There's ways to trick the systems to get your property to show up more often. Needless to say, we're the best at this in the market. We figured out the Kentucky Fried Chicken recipe of portals, and your property will get more views on portals by working with us than anybody else. Now, the next thing that we do to advertise properties, in the third place, you have to make sure your property is showcased is on classified services. Classified services would be things like Craigslist, Oodle, Kijiji, Backpage. These are places where we can showcase your property. I know what you're thinking right now. You're like, Ben? Ben, I don't know what, what I'm dealing with here. I'm not, I'm, sell, I'm, not, I'm not selling a refrigerator, you knucklehead, that we don't want to showcase our property on Craigslist because I would like people with a credit score above 400. Well, here's what we found, is that we, we sold a $2 million property to a customer from uh, Central America because they saw the property on Craigslist. Now, why would all these other international people look on Craigslist? Well, the reason is is because in most countries, they don't have an MLS. They don't have a brokerage kind of place where they can go to find all properties. They have two things in common with us. They have Craigslist, and they have Google. And it's important that we showcase your property on these sites. Now, the average agent might post your property on Craigslist, but I'm going to post your property on Craigslist from the day I list it, and then every 48 hours, hours thereafter until your property sells. And we've captured clients from all over the United States. We've sold million-dollar properties, and we capture nearly 1,000 buyers a month that are interested from our post on Craigslist. And this is massive. Other agents don't believe in it, but they don't sell properties like we do. Now, the fourth place that we advertise your property is search engines. Search engines will be things like Google, Yahoo, Bing, MSN, all those different places. Now, I don't know which one you use, Jeff, but I, I tend to use Google a lot, so I'm going to talk to you about that one. Most search engines work about the same. Basically, a consumer goes to the search engines and they type in a phrase, Seattle real estate, Bellingham real estate, Bellingham homes, etc., etc. And what happens is that there's two ways that websites show up. 
right here is just paid advertising and I pay to make sure that my websites using multiple show up on that list and I pick the words that I want to show up for now what I like to do and encourage you to do is to go on here and search for a phrase that you would like your home to show up for and let me know and I'll make sure that our website shows up so your home can be showcased and then if you see any of my competitors on there feel free to click on one of their ads because it'll cost them a dollar or two huh that was funny right just kidding bad karma don't do that besides that you're gonna be disappointed when you see the quality of their websites the next place that you uh, are going to see websites online is here and this is through search engine optimization and search engine optimization is how Google decides organically or for free how to show and which website to show and we work nonstop on making sure that our websites show up for specific phrases so what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to just put a buyer hat on and just close your eyes and imagine with me real quick if you were a buyer looking to buy a home like yours what would you type into the search engines and that would be things like maybe a Lake Whatcom View home or a waterfront home in, in, in Seattle a Ballard View condo something like that and, and make sure you help the consumer get down to a narrowed search term because I believe people search for specific things and then do things like post their property on active rain write a blog post about them uh, name your listing on um, on brevity because it gives you a single property web page name it that search engine friendly phrase like like walk and view home uh, name the video you put on YouTube that do all these things and, and the, your listings will show up under those search phrases and this is powerful they, people like to see their listings when they type in a phrase now it's not going to work if you type in Seattle real estate and to be honest people don't search for Seattle real estate only real estate agents search for Seattle real estate people don't wake up in the morning and say oh, I'd like to go buy some real estate today they don't do that that's dumb they don't type in REO either they don't know what REO is remember they think it's a speed wagon they type in things like homes and condos in this area in this neighborhood or close to parks or close to schools blah 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 now the next thing that we do is advertise your property on social media sites things like Facebook LinkedIn Twitter YouTube Pinterest on blogs like tumblr and active brain on Google Plus we make sure that your property is showcased all over social media in fact we created a tool on brevity that allows us to post your property directly to Facebook directly to Twitter directly to Pinterest directly to Google directly to Craigslist directly to active rain and it reminds me to do it every couple days so we'll be non-stop promoting your property on social media to make sure that your property gets a ton of traffic from those sites and I'll provide you with the links and information so that you can share your property on your own Pinterest site and Google Plus and your own Twitter accounts and Facebook accounts etc <clears throat> are you kidding me when you add all these things together what I found is that this is the most aggressive marketing plan for marketing your property online that any agent in any market does now I'm willing to show you my you know our search engine traffic our Google Analytics the different countries that people are coming from if you want but let me ask you a question is there anything that another agent has said that they would do to market your property in regard to being online that for some reason I forgot to mention that I forgot to mention now the next thing that NAR says is that signs and flyers are important signs and flyers represented nearly nine percent of all sales last year nine percent so it's important that we make sure that we create great signs lots of signs offers on signs <clears throat> that drive traffic we do things like put buy this home and I'll sell your home for free to encourage people in our market that have no equity to buy your property now of course terms and conditions apply and we use this to get people that don't think they have equity that actually do have equity to buy your home this drives a lot of buyers that would normally not be in the market to buy a property like yours now we do another thing on signs and flyers first thing we do is we don't put the price we don't put the price 
on the exterior flyers because it gets people to call me and I'm a, I'm a great salesperson I'm great at customer service so when somebody calls me I'm gonna get them inside your house if I give them the price they walk away and they don't get inside and I know I'm gonna sell your home when they get inside wouldn't you agree now the interior flyers the ones you can hang up at work or your people can have inside those will be color and beautiful those will have the price in them now on the back of each flyer I put 16 other properties now this is entirely entirely optional although nobody has ever opted out <clears throat> what this allows us to do is to advertise 16 properties that don't compete directly with you in exchange for me being able to advertise your property on at least 16 other signs in town this increases our ability to sell your property via signage more than any other agent now we learned about open houses from NARS report as well and they said nearly about 5% of all properties sold because a consumer went to an open house a lot of those are probably new construction so I want to I want to encourage you to think about the upsides and downsides of open houses number one is a lot of times people use open houses as, as a way to uh, steal jewelry firearms paperwork medications so if you decide to do an open house make sure that you lock those valuable items up now I will I will try to be and only let people that are escorted with me around the home but you get too many in there at a time and it gets out of control so if we decide to do an open house I need you to secure those items otherwise we have what's called a 24-hour open house where we use videos virtual tour to show people 24 hours a day seven days a week all across the world your property and then I only bring in pre-qualified buyers so it's up to you which one you would like to do we can do open houses from time to time or we can just do the 24-hour open house and just have pre-qualified people in there that are escorted privately by me now the last couple things there's other other is about 8% this year that's that's things like friends and family the sellers already knew the buyer and I gotta ask you a question do you already have a buyer in mind for your property Jeff hello no okay well this isn't uh, this isn't very important to you then but what I can do is I can race you to sell your home and I'll give you flyers my business cards I'll give you uh, virtual tours links for Facebook social media I'll give you emails to send out so that you can tell all your friends and family that your home is for sale and maybe we can find somebody out there that uh, would be interested in buying your home and I'm going to do the same things to all my friends and family and past clients and on my own personal social media sites okay and then the last thing is print advertising and what I know about our market is if you took the local newspaper you added them up on top of each other and you added the real estate magazines, the Harmon Homes, the all the other real estate and home magazines out there, you could stack them all the way to the roof. The roof. The roof is on. What? Hello? You'd stack them all the way up to the roof, and that would only result in 2% of the sales. NAR said that last year, print advertising only resulted in 2% of the sales. You know what's sad and silly about that, Jeff? Is that nearly... You know, most agents spend 80 to 90 percent of their advertising on on print, print something that only results in two percent of the home sales. Only two percent of buyers found the home that they purchased in print advertising. Most of those were probably builders that took out full page ads. I mean, who picks up a newspaper to look for a house anymore? Who picks up a newspaper? Period. That's weird. I, I we do do a little bit of print advertising. We, we chose to advertise in the real estate book you know the thing that you read when you're at the teriyaki restaurant when you're waiting for them to come out this is what I do now if you decide to do any other types of print advertising what our team does is we'll organize the ad we'll create the photographs we'll put it in the in the publication and uh, we'll have you pay for it at the end of the transaction will refund you any money that you personally spend for print advertising what normally happens is after a week of you doing it and nobody calls you stop paying for it just like we did and we focus on the things that really drive sales now I'm talking about cost-effective things guys I want you to make sure that you're spending your money and you're tracking your your number of clicks your number of calls all those things together now
When I add all those things up, I believe that this is the most aggressive marketing plan out there, the most aggressive marketing plan we've seen. I've got to ask you a question, though. When it's all said and done, is there anything that another agent has said that they would do in regard to marketing your property that for some reason I forgot to mention? Memorize that script. You're pre-closing the entire time. Is there anything that another agent has said that they would do that for some reason I forgot to mention? Now, they might bring up something, and it could be something silly you just forgot. Maybe a call capture service on a sign or some archaic like a broker tour or something silly like that. Just bring it up and say those are optional or those are outdated or, you know, that was cool in the 80s, but people don't do it anymore. But I'm more than willing to do it if that's what makes you happy. When you add all that up, your client should be closed. What I'm saying is there should not be any objections left. And, and this is a longer version of the presentation. I can get this done very fast. I can do it in three to five minutes. I, I did it in Phoenix for you guys for about 3,000 people. I can do it in five minutes. I can do it on a whiteboard, or I can drag it out an hour if somebody is a high S. Now, the goal of this is to, when you're done with the presentation, have no objections. So that you guys get paid more often. I hope this helped your guys' lives. I hope I'm changing your lives. I'm hoping you guys have an amazing day. And uh, um, go out there and, and kick some butt. Thanks, guys, for so much for the call.